Hi guys, it's Kirsty here. I just wanted to do a quick time lapse and show you guys how I created this cow in pastel. Okay, so I've got the main sketch of my Jersey cow laid out and I'm going to start with these pan pastels. So I would recommend this for anybody who's tried pastel and really disliked it because of the way it feels on your fingers and how it's smudgy and it's quite messy to work with traditionally. The applicator that I'm using is a soft tool, S-O-F-F-T. You can get a variety of different sizes for the tool that I'm working with now and you can also get larger sponges for larger areas as well so it's, it's really quite versatile. I use pan pastels for my base layers quite a lot because you can control how much you're putting down. If you put really thin layers of this down it doesn't fill up the tooth of your paper as quick as if you're using the traditional soft pastel sticks. When I talk about the tooth of the paper, I'm describing the surface or the feel of the paper. So generally the more tooth the paper has, the rougher it feels. I like to think of them as hills and valleys. So if you grab your pastel and you apply it so thickly that it's filling up the valleys of your paper, you're not going to have any of the top points of the hills for your pastel to grab onto anymore. It's just going to glide across the paper and not stick very well. So you'll see it a bit better when I start working on the cow because I want to do a few more layers on that one. I start using my finger or a cotton tip or a tissue to blend in the pastel a little bit more so that the dust is not sitting on the surface of my paper and filling up that tooth. So originally I was going to blend out the background to be really soft and out of focus but I liked the way that the pastel strokes looked um, so I decided to leave it like that. If you didn't want the strokes of the pastel to show, you can continue to just add more and more layers of the pan pastel and it will eventually blend in really smoothly. So I am working on a sanded paper and you can get papers that are, are not sanded and they're, I find that they're very hard to work with. They're, they're too smooth for my liking. I quite like this paper because you can add more layers than you can generally add on a smooth paper. But there is still a limit to how many layers you can add. So just keep that in mind when you have an area that has a highlight that's really quite bright. You don't want to put dark pastel there because it's going to be really hard to get that white really white again. And same with the darks. If you have quite a lot of pastel down, it's really hard to go darker again. You can jump up a couple of values after laying down your base colors. I usually purposely layer down darker colors as my base layer so that I can add some lighter pastel on top. But going from black to white or white to black is really difficult with pastels. You can't just go and put a white pastel pencil on top of a black background and hope that it will be as bright as you would without having any pastel on the paper to begin with. So now that I'm done laying in the background and the base layer with the pan pastels, I'm starting to go in with the pastel pencils and I'm using them to start to create the fur texture. So you can see I'm being quite messy with this layer of pencil. Um, but it will be blended out so you won't be able to see all of these messy pencil strokes in the next layer. So the challenge that I had with this piece was that yes it is a brown cow and I get this question a lot with animals that are one color or as seen as one color like a black dog or a, a white cat but if you look really closely at your reference photo it's not just black or just white or just brown. There are lots of different colors in every animal that you draw and I find that the more artwork I create the easier it is for me to see the colors in the reference photo. And I, I get asked all the time, what's the perfect color for this? Or what's the perfect orange for a tiger? Or what's the perfect brown for a cow? And a lot of people have this question when drawing skin tones for people as well. And the answer is that there's, there's not one perfect color for anything. It, if you put the same subject in a different light, it's going to be a completely different color. And it's not really about the color, it's about the values. So if you can get your darks dark enough and your lights light enough, then that's going to look a lot more realistic than if you found that one perfect orange for that tiger. For example, most of you would have seen a graphite drawing that is completely black and white and it can look super realistic and there's no color involved in that whatsoever. I could draw this entire cow blue and as long as my values are correct it's going to look more realistic than someone who's just used one color brown. And if you're struggling to tell if your values are correct, what I do is take a picture of my artwork, turn it into black and white and then get your reference photo and turn that into black and white as well. Put them side by side and just compare whether your darks are as dark as the reference photo and your lights are as light as the reference photo. 
This is going to dramatically improve how realistic your drawings are looking. So you can see here that I'm adding more of the details with the pastel pencils. I haven't got a really sharp tip at the moment on the pencils. You don't actually need, well the way that I work, I don't need a sharp tip on the end of my pencil until literally the last minute. I can get away with doing most of the detail with the uh, more of a blunt tip. This pastel that I'm using is actually a softer pastel than the pencils that I'm using. So this means that more of the pastel comes off of the stick when laying it onto the paper. So I save these pastels for the final details at the end because this is what I can use to create the highlights quite a lot brighter than my pastel pencils will. I also saved all of my details for the face of the cow. I wanted to keep the body and the background quite uh, out of focus and not as much detail as the face just so that it would be the main focal point of this piece. You can see here that I'm adding in a bunch of little hairs with the pastel. I'm actually going to blend this through again so it's not so wiry looking. I'm just trying to portray the general direction of the fur rather than drawing individual hairs. Um, this piece is not a close-up piece obviously so in nature you wouldn't see individual hairs this close up so I will be blending that out again. This is how the final piece turned out. I will see you in the next video.